Today, we are going to talk about integrated risk management in the energy industry for a quantitative perspective, okay? The first area that I would like to show is the global overview. In the energy industry, organizations need to control projects, need to control investment, need to control technical, operational, health, safety, environment, quality, and other non-financial risks. If people are not controlling certain areas of the organization, they are going to have implications. For example, in a really, really standardized approach, if we want to uh, invest in a new refinery or in a new uh, chemical plant, of course, delays of in the project implementation is going to have delays consequences in the area of profit making because you have delays to start producing and selling the product. Okay, so everything is interconnected. If you have problem in health and safety, you have re regulatory really strict regulatory areas that we need to fulfill, and as well other areas that are are interconnected. The first level that we need to understand is the integrated risk management approach. It's understanding how the energy industry needs to manage projects on their risk, so risk-based project management, okay? It's not the traditional way of doing projects. It's not working in the project plan level. It's working closely with the decision maker, but also with the project planner as well or the project manager uh, professional. The second area that I want to share with you is the project economic evaluation because, as I mentioned, if you have delays in certain projects or you increase the capital expenditure, of course, you are hampering the NPV of the project or any other prof uh, key performance indicator the organization is using for assessing how well is this project adding value to the firm or to the shareholders, and we are going to show briefly the project economic valuation dimension as in this integrated uh, risk management approach. Finally, uh, I, I would like to touch a little bit the, the dynamics of um, um, cost and schedule risk, and as well how the organization can start uh, quantifying information associated with uh, the risk registers, the LOPA studies, they have sub studies uh, or any other uh, framework the organization is using. Uh, this, this, this area, I just wanted to show that everything is interconnected when you are making a financial or economic or operational or project management decision. You need information from different sources, financial, non financial information. And this is the integrated risk management approach that I'm talking about. The first, the first component is analyzing Project management. There are two important and probably the most relevant key performance indicators in the project management perspective that matter a lot for decision makers. Remember, risk management is how we transfer information from the, the data, the information sources we have to the decision maker to support decisions in the organization. The first area that I want to cover today is how cost and schedule play an important role and how quanti the, the risk quantification play an important role. So the first area that I want to show you is the following. For every project, it can be a refinery, it can be a wind farm, it can be a petrochemical uh, uh, plant, or a maintenance program, a decommissioning program, the strategy is always the same. We have the problem, and the, the quick strategy is asking the project planners or the multidiscipline engineering team, and they start collecting what are the activities, what are the, and immediately they put everything in a project plan. In this project plan, as you see, there are projects that have 300, 1,000 detailed plans. Working at this level, imagine that this is the the main problem that, uh, from the risk management perspective, we have been experiencing in many organizations. The first one is 
when the decision makers need to make that decision, imagine that you go to his office, the manager, the asset operator, with a book, a global book of detail plan. It's really difficult for them to make them to understand, okay, what are the most important activities? What are the critical activities here? How we can quantify that that critical path you are providing me is the most accurate? What happens if I change the dynamic, the logic of the project? What are the implications? The project is going to delay more? It's going to accelerate the completion time? Or it's going to cost more? It's going to cost less? It's really difficult for an organization to start making decisions in the detail plan. However, the detail plan is really important because if we are able to communicate the information from the decision maker to the project manager or the project manager to the decision maker, we need something more flexible. That's according to the best practices in project risk management, one of the the, the, the initial area and the project management institute and the ATM uh, in certain in some reports they are emphasizing that we need to understand the project. Understanding the project is critical. If we understand the project, at least we have 80 percent of the dimension of risk at least on the control. Let's say on the control from the decision maker making perspective. In any organization. When you get the detail plan, if you don't have a fine because you can create your own network and later you communicate that information with a, with a plan, okay? Here is understanding how these at least macro activities are going to be interconnected. For example, the, can we implement this activity at this level? Instead of changing all the, the interconnection of all these uh, Primavera 6 or, or so on, sit down and understand the project network, the interconnection, okay? That is important because right now from the risk management perspective, 80% of the project managers are working in this way. 10% of agile companies are working around this, at least creating the network. But that is not enough for doing quantitative or project, the formal project risk management. The next step that is important here is understanding that behind these activities you have uncertainty. Can we have the permit in place? Can we mobilize and demobilize? Can we allocate these people quickly in the platform? Can we uh, get the engineering and the construction professionals in the site to the site immediately? Or we need to wait? It's understanding that, at least in the macro perspective, what are the uncertainties behind the activities that we are uh, analyzing. Mobilization, yes, mobilization matter. Demobilization matter, yes. But what are other dimensions here? Are we going to have the feasibility, the financial investment decision on time, the procurement process on time? So is introducing this information, and this is the role of quantitative risk management. Try to model, understand, and quantify the risk associated with this, this project. So we start questioning, okay, if the project plan says that we are going to complete this refinery in 90 days, okay, what is the probability that this time overrun? What is the probability that the cost of this refinery overrun? Is possible pushing down this, this cost? What are the opportunities? So this is the area of quantitative risk management. It's getting information from the experts, the engineering, from past projects, normal conditions, and the only thing that we know for sure here when we are doing this exercise, even if you are doing the same project, having the same group of people, Having the same, the same information is not a guarantee that you are going to have the same output when you implement the project. The first area of quantitative risk management in project management risk that is important to understand is understanding that the critical path is not fixed. If you are making decisions in the detailed plan and the Primavera Microsoft project or any other open project uh, or any software tool you are using, and you have a critical path there, 
empirically, you have really low chance to achieve that critical path because it's deterministic. If I'm able to model the uncertainty around all these activities, I'm able to quantify, and this is the, the, the how quantitative techniques in risk management help you, the project plan, the detailed plan, when I run this one, gave me that the red area, the red line, which is the, 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 the critical path here, is affecting the project. But look at this. It's 45% chances of occurrence. That mean if you do something in that critical path, you reduce the risk or any other activities that is not the critical path, increases the risk immediately, that critical path changes. That mean understanding the critical path is no enough. We need to quantify what is the probability of that critical path. Because the organization right now can say, if you are not able to complete that project on time, what happens is we introduce certain flexibility and we start moving activities to certain areas, if possible, if necessary, okay? With that information in place, what additional output gives you quantitative risk management in project management? It gives you the risk profile of the key performance indicator. So it's not only telling you what is the most likely time and cost to complete the project? It's telling you that when the uncertainty is there, you need to visualize that you have chances that the project overrun on cost and time. But not only that, if you, the quantitative risk management tells you, the methodology, the practices, the, the approach is telling you that not only the risk profile of this variable is, uh, are, are, are enough to make the decision. We need to understand profile of individual activity, which of them are impacting the most the decision-making process. Because if you know that these two activities, these two activities that are here, centralizes 80, 70, 90 percent of the risk or the variability of that project, you need to start controlling the risk of that activity because that one, that activity are going to hamper the project in the larger proportion. For doing this process, what the organization or what professional needs, and this is why we are working closely with the Energy Institute, the organization needs, the, the professional needs to be confident understanding Monte Carlo simulation, understanding uh, how to read a risk measures, for example, a standard deviation, kurtosis, skewness, all these type of things give more information to the decision maker because sometimes you said, well, this project has high chances that obtaining time or cost below what we are expecting. So that information matters. And in addition to this, you need to use analytics, analysis like a tornado analysis, simulation, dynamic sensitivity analysis, a scenario analysis, optimization. And at the same time, when I mentioned that changing the order in certain activities, we are talking about that quantitative risk management professional also needs real option skills. When to contract the project, when to extend the life of the project, when to outsource the project, because if the risk and cost is really huge, this is why many organizations are negotiating public-private partnerships, okay? That means we share the commitment, the project with the government or any other organization to reduce and work a little bit with ourselves. Let me give you this example here, guys, because this is something that I'm doing right now with this coronavirus perspective, okay? And I'm going to show you a little bit how the project risk management perspective works. And right now, I'm going to show you the following. Look at this, this basic project. What I did is I have a big project, and I put it for only educational purposes for the Energy Institute in this webinar and helping you to have something to go back, at least to think about it. Look at this. I, I have an engineering construction project, let's say, 
a refinery or something like that. And I create, I understand the network. Based upon of this network, I can start immediately on introducing where the project planners give me this most likely. But I know that I have uncertainty in completing these activities, and I do business as usual. I do integrated project risk management to this project, okay? With this information, I run simulation, I can get a risk profile. And what happened? Suddenly, coronavirus started impacting every area of the organization. So what are the things? How we can start immediately understanding what is the implication of coronavirus? I, I put there coronavirus as an example. But it's the same process that you need to follow when you are doing any other risk implication outside of the project. Okay? What we did here is an activity-based methodology because what we did, we divided the project by the most important activities. It can be, if you, you start working and you say, how we can do that? One way to do it is probably to add the project plan, give me the level two, level three project plan. Uh, if the, the, the Microsoft or Primavera is not able to give you the uh, network, you build it. It's, it's, this is the, you know that here, this area is going to guarantee that you are going to drive the decision making. With this information, by activity, we understand what are the risks, what is the maximum time, what is the maximum cost this activity should have. Okay? Now we have coronavirus, and what we do is an activity-based analysis. Activity-based analysis means you don't need to go totally blind and start saying, well, this project is going to be delayed 20 months because of corona. No. You need to go inside understanding what are the resources, what are the activities, what are the equipment, the material that might be influenced by this coronavirus because probably you don't get the suppliers on time, the work material, uh, people cannot work in, in, inside, uh, and so forth. And this is what we do. We start chasing this number and we said, well, guys, sorry, the procurement process is going to be delayed because this supplier is not going to give me the product on time. So we need to get an alternative source. Probably it's going to increase the cost. So you need to start asking by activity what are the implications of this coronavirus. And this is the same methodology if you have weather conditions. When I, I've been watching people uh, in the oil and gas industry, for, for example, working in the North Sea on this uh, adverse environmental conditions, they said, no, we, we don't have some strategies to implement for uh, the – no, you, you know when that activity is going to be affected, when it's August, it's October, when the weather conditions are going to impact that activity. So you need to increase the maximum value. You need to introduce certain tolerance, certain adverse events are going to do the same. And it's the same when you have any other type of rare, um, rare risk impacting the project. With that information that you have there, what are you going to do? You right now, you can visualize and compare the project. What is the implication? Oh, look at this. This is without COVID. And this is with COVID. In the past, I said that this is a critical path. And right now, because of coronavirus, everything changes. Everything changes. That comes back to the original point where I said the critical path is totally probabilistic. It's a stochastic. And at the same time, these activities were the most important for this project. But probably the, right now, they change. They change. Because right now, new activities are going to impact the project. It's the same process that we have when we complete certain activities that are in zero, that are done. Of course, the critical path is going to readapt because you change. There are certain activities. Imagine right now, in a really extreme case, all the activities in the critical path completed. You have a new critical path. Those activities that are not completed are going to reassess, reevaluate the critical path. And this is the type of things that we have. 80% of the project risk management implementing techniques, tools, methodology for quantitative risk management 
Monte Carlo simulations, is helping the professional quickly because they have the experience, they know how to do projects, they know how to engage with the, 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 the team and the contractors and so forth. So they need to use this one as a supporting methodology. And this is the type of things we do.